Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us continue with our discussion. Uh, so, you know we are at the stage of uh, trying to understand the meaning of open sets in the Salisky topology and I told you uh, in the last class that uh, uh, an open set is uh, always built up of so called basic as a union of basic open subsets and these basic open subsets are subsets which are uh, given by the locus of non vanishing of a single uh, polynomial okay they are called the basic open subsets now you see uh, uh, there are uh, uh, there is a very important property about uh, open sets in the zariski topology which is what stating with stating which uh, i ended the last lecture and that was quasi compactness okay so let me be let let me begin from there okay so uh, uh, so so here is the definition uh, uh, a topological space space is called quasi compact if uh, uh, given an open cover uh, we can always find a finite sub cover. So this is the definition of quasi compactness. In fact, see if you general, uh, if you study general topology, this is the definition of compactness. Okay, in general topology, uh, normally we, this is the definition we give for compactness of a space. The compactness is, if you give me a collection of open subsets whose union equals the space, then from that collection you can extract a finite sub collection whose union will also be equal to the whole space. This is what it means. Uh, when you, when we say that in every open cover uh, you can always find a finite sub cover okay and this should happen for any open cover when i say and of course it means any so uh, so if you want maybe i'll say i'll modify this and to any which is what i mean so what does that mean uh, so if you write it in in symbols you know uh, that is if x equal to union of u alpha where uh, or let me write u lambda lambda in capital lambda uh, where uh, each u lambda inside x is open 
then there exists lambda 1 through lambda m finitely many indices from the set lambda such that x is just the union uh, x is just the union of these uh, corresponding u lambda. So, x is union uh, u lambda i i equal to 1 to m and we say that uh, uh, the the sub collection u lambda 1 through u lambda m is a finite sub cover of the original cover uh, which consists of the collection of all the u lambdas okay. Now of course each u lambda is an open subset okay now this is the usually this is the definition of compactness in a topological space okay this is the usual definition of compactness but if you study topology you will always find that uh, uh, just compactness alone is not a very good property usually you should also have compactness with Hausdorffness and the more the most good type of space is a space which is locally compact Hausdorff okay these are the nice spaces to for on which you can do reasonably good topology okay. So but in algebraic geometry we uh, especially in connection with the Zariski topology uh, we, we do not use the word compact okay the reason is uh, we uh, uh, I will tell you the reason for that later but the more important thing is that we use the word quasi compact okay and uh, so uh, the the first thing that I wanted to notice about this definition is that uh, this is the definition of what a compact topological space is in general but in the Zariski topology whenever you are in algebraic geometry you always use only the word quasi compact you do not do not use the word compact okay and uh, of course that should uh, the technical reason for that is that compactness stands for something else and uh, even there this something else is not called compactness it is given a different name it is called properness or completeness okay. So uh, the word compact itself is kind of uh, not very suitable for a uh, algebraic geometry okay and uh, another uh, so you know you must remember that this quasi is especially in the in this case of the Zariski topology. Now what I want to tell you is that if you now take uh, k to be an algebraically closed field and you take affine space over k and you look at the Zariski topology then uh, the topology itself is quasi compact I mean the Zariski topology is quasi compact for free it is God given so it is nothing special okay but you must you can remember that when we study general topology compactness is a very special thing okay. So you know uh, in Euclidean space a subset is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded okay so if you take a subset of Euclid Euclidean space which does not have a boundary point then it cannot be compact if it is not closed then it cannot be compact. So compactness means so many things uh, when we study uh, the Euclidean topology okay that is uh, Rn okay n dimensional real space with the usual topology but as far as Zariski topology is concerned this compactness uh, in the sense of every open cover having a finite sub cover that comes for free okay. So that is why we reserve the word uh, quasi compact for that so this is a this is the last statement I made last time uh, uh, so so I should say if you want a proposition uh, the the Zariski topology. is quasi compact okay it is quasi compact uh, so let me write it okay now uh, why is this uh, happening so uh, the reason is actually it is because of the the noetherianness okay it is actually because of the noetherianness uh, which I will explain as follows. So what I am going to do is first is I am going to uh, 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 say that this follows this the proof of the proposition follows from a couple of lemmas okay. So here is uh, uh, so let me write that the, the proof follows from the following the the next two lemmas okay so uh, uh, 
uh, so the first one so here is the lemma and that lemma is the, the, the lemma is that uh, uh, any no ethereum topological space is quasi compact This is the first lemma which says that you take a topological space that is no ethereum then automatically it is quasi compact alright and uh, in the Zariski topology is you know uh, uh, is no ethereum in the sense that uh, if you take uh, any affine variety uh, for, for that matter you take any closed any closed subset any algebraic set in affine space then you know that uh, the uh, it can be uh, broken down it has no ethereum decomposition and affine space is of course no ethereum okay affine space if you take affine n space over uh, k okay uh, which is just kn with the zariski topology k an algebraically closed field okay then you know the uh, the affine space is uh, a no ethereum topological space for the zariski topology that's just because that just translates to uh, the no ethereumness of the ring of functions on the affine space which is the no ethereumness of the polynomial ring in n variables which you know is true because of Hilbert's basis theorem okay. So, uh, uh, so I am saying that the quasi compactness uh, just is a result of the no ethereum property. So, how does one prove this the proof is pretty easy uh, proof is well what do I have to show I will have to show I have a topological space which is no ethereum then I have to show it is quasi compact. So, I uh, uh, assume that the topological space is called x I assume that u lambda is an open cover for x I have to cook up for you a finite sub cover I have to find finitely many indices lambdas such that the corresponding u lambdas finitely many u lambdas their union is also equal to x okay that is what I will have to do. So, so what I will do is uh, so, so let uh, u lambda small lambda in capital lambda be an open cover for x that is x is union over lambda u lambda okay. I will have to show that uh, there is a finite sub cover uh, from this collection for x okay. So, what do I do I uh, I do the following thing I use I try to somehow make use of the hypothesis my hypoth hypothesis is that it is no ethereum topological space. Now, what I what is the definition of no ethereum topological space if you recall uh, there are several definitions equivalent definitions one definition is uh, perhaps the basic definition or the usual definition is that there is DCC for closed sets that is if you have a uh, sequence of closed subsets one becoming smaller and smaller that is every next one contained in the previous one then this sequence has to at some point it has to stabilize that means if it is a strict sequence then it has to stop and if you do not demand it is a strict uh, sequence then it then all the terms of the sequence become the same beyond a certain finite stage okay. This is the DCC that is the descending chain condition for closed sets okay and uh, uh, you know when you put this condition for affine space uh, you know affine space uh, in affine space closed sets correspond to uh, radical ideals uh, in the polynomial ring and therefore the descending chain condition for closed sets will correspond to the ascending chain condition for uh, the corresponding ideals in the polynomial ring which is true because the polynomial ring is no ethereum by Hilbert's basis theorem and this is what gives you the fact that affine space is uh, with the Zariski topology is no ethereum topo is a no ethereum topological space. So, that is one definition that there is DCC for closed sets there are other definitions the other definition is that uh, since open sets are the complements of closed sets okay uh, you can say that there is ACC for open sets okay that is one that is one equivalent definition and then there is another uh, definition of uh, there is another equivalent yet another equivalent definition that is given any non empty collection of closed sets there is always a minimal element with respect to inclusion this is one more 
uh, this is one more uh, definition equivalent definition of noetherianness uh, of the topological space which in the case of open space actually translates for the to the to the to the polynomial ring having the property that you give me any uh, you know uh, if you give me a collection of ideals there is always a maximal element if you give me a non empty collection of ideals there is always a maximal element that is for example the ring theoretic definition of uh, one of the equivalent definitions of, noe of a noetherian ring okay and then there is there is yet another uh, 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 um, yeah so probably i'll use i i will try to use that so i'll try to use the fact that in this since this topological space is noetherian if you give me a collection non empty if you give me a non empty collection of open sets there is always a maximal element so what i'll do is so i'll have to apply it to a collection what is a collection i'll take the collection of consisting of unions uh, consisting of finitely many members from here okay i will take all finite subsets of lambda capital lambda i will take the corresponding unions and take that collection okay that is a collection of non empty open sets and that should have a maximal element and my claim is that maximal element which will be a finite union anyway by definition will be all of x and then i am done okay so what i am going to do is uh, put script s to be the set of all u lambda 1 union u lambda n such that lambda 1 through lambda m are elements of uh, lambda and m is an integer m uh, uh, m greater than or equal to 1 take this collection I what I, what I am doing is I am just taking finite unions from this collection okay and I am putting that putting all these things together and getting this family of subsets then this of course this family of subsets is non empty okay because uh, of course my x is a non empty topological space and there is at least one open set and that one open set will occur here okay this m could be one small m small m could be one in which case even the singletons are there okay. Now, since x is noetherian s has a maximal element x has a maximal element okay uh, let uh, the maximal let that maximal element be well uh, u <coughs> lambda 1 union uh, let me call it uh, uh, let me give some special names lambda 1 prime to u lambda uh, l prime uh, where lambda 1 prime through lambda l prime are all elements of lambda okay. So, there is some finite collection of lambdas which I want to call lambda 1 primes through through lambda l prime and the corresponding open sets and they are that union that union that finite union is a is a member in this collection and that is the maximal element. Now uh, take any uh, u lambda okay then you see u lambda 1 prime union u lambda l prime union if I put together is u this u uh, this u lambda also that will contain this element uh, u this maximal element lambda 1 prime union u lambda l prime okay this is obvious because I have just added a added I have taken union with a bigger set I, with another set. So, this is contained in this, but mind you this is in script s because this is also a finite union okay but this is supposed to be maximal so what will tell you is that this is equality what is the property of a maximal element the property of a maximal element is that if it is if there is a if there is an element bigger than that then it has to be equal to that okay. So, uh, this element is bigger than that so it has to be equal to that so uh, uh, this this gives uh, that u lambda is actually contained in u lambda 1 union u lambda lambda prime 1 to lambda prime x see if this is equal to this then this extra set I have taken union with 
has to be already contained in this only then I will get equality ok. So, but this u lambda it took was arbitrary that this the small lambda subscript I took was arbitrary. So, what this tells you uh, this is true for all small lambda in capital lambda. So, this tells you that x which is a union of all the u lambdas because all these u lambdas are, are a cover for x that is also contained in this u lambda 1 prime union uh, u lambda prime l which is of course uh, contained in x ok and this will tell you that x is actually the union of all uh, x is actually this maximal element ok and I am done that is the end of the proof I have proved that there is a uh, there is a finite sub cover ok. So, this is how I get very easily that uh, noetherian topological space is always quasi compact ok. Now, I will give you another lemma so here is another lemma and what this lemma actually tells you is that the property of a space being noetherian is a hereditary property namely if a, a if a topological space is noetherian then any subset of that topological space given the induced topology also automatically becomes noetherian ok. So, uh, uh, so let me write that down if uh, x is a topological space is noetherian topological space and y in x is a sub subset ok then y is noetherian for the induced topology ok. Any subspace of a noetherian topological space is also noetherian that is in the property of a topological space being noetherian is a hereditary property ok. Now, how does one show this? So, that is the proof of that is also pretty easy. So, proof uh, so you know I will have to show that uh, y so y is subset of x I have to show that I know that capital X is noetherian I have to show that capital Y is noetherian. So, what I will have to do is for y I will have to verify DCC for uh, closed sets ok. So, uh, so what do I do I take a descending chain of closed sets in y ok. Let T 1 containing T 2 and so on be uh, descending chain of closed sets in y ok. Take a descending chain of closed sets in y. Now, what you do is you take uhhh uh, take closures of these uh, sets in the bigger space x ok. Then uh, they are closures the uh, then taking closures closures in x gives the descending chain. T 1 bar containing T 2 bar and so on ok. So, I am just I have a I am taking closure in the bigger space x ok. So, what you must understand is that you see T 1 T 1 closure is the closure of T 1 in capital X T 2 closure similarly is the closure of T 2 in capital X and see T 1 closure uh, contains T 1 which contains T 2. So, T 1 closure is a closed set in capital X which contains T 2 and therefore, it has to contain T 2 closure because T 2 closure is the smallest closed subset of uh, capital X which contains T 2 that is how this descending chain gives rise to this descending chain ok. But then what do you know about capital X you know about capital X that it is noetherian and therefore, this descending chain has to stabilize at some point. So, since uh, capital X is noetherian there exists an i i naught such that uh, uh, t i uh, is equal to t i plus 1 
for all i greater than or equal to i naught. I have this. This is simply the definition of the Noetherian property that you have a, if you have a descending chain uh, then it has to stabilize. Of course you know if I am assuming that the original chain is not a strict chain if I had assumed it is a strict chain then what I will uh, then I will have to show that the strict chain is only it terminates it is only finite okay but I am not assuming that what I am assuming is that I am not assuming that these containments are all strict okay. So these containments also need not be strict okay and then I am just trying to use the Noetherian condition to say that it stabilizes at some point. Now what I want to tell you is that the if this holds with the bars then it also holds without the bars okay. Why is that so because you see uh, you see if you calculate uh, if you calculate T i plus 1 T i plus 1 is uh, so uh, T i plus 1 is actually T i plus 1 bar intersection with y okay. See you take uh, you take uh, you take a closed subset of y okay it is not closed in the bigger space x then you take its closure in x and then you intersect it with y you will get back the you will get back the uh, closed subset y because when you in when you take closure in x you are adding limits you are adding the boundary even in x which is in the bigger space and then if you intersect it back with y you are only looking at those boundary points in x which are already in y but then the original set is closed therefore it contains all its boundary points in which are li which are already lying inside the subs subspace therefore T i plus 1 is T i plus 1 bar intersection y but then T i plus 1 bar is actually T i bar intersection y and that is equal to T i this is true for all i greater than equal to i naught and I am done. So what I have proved is that uh, uh, the fact that the uh, the T bars uh, descending chain the descending chain of T bar stabilizes implies that the descending chain of T stabilizes okay. So, so that is the end of the proof of this lemma which says that uh, uh, Noetherianness is a hereditary property okay. Now apply both of these lemmas to the Zariski topology okay. First of all notice that uh, if I take a fine space any a n is uh, uh, is a Noetherian topological space that we have already seen that is just as I told you a reflection of the fact that the polynomial ring in n variables is a Noetherian ring. So any affine space is a Noetherian topological space. Now since it is a Noetherian topological space any subset of a n given the induced topology is also a Noetherian topological space because of this lemma the second lemma okay and if you now apply the first lemma that subset given the induced topology is Noetherian implies that that subset is quasi compact. So what this altogether te will tell you is that uh, it, it will give you this proposition that you give me any subset of a fine space any subset of a fine space it will be quasi compact in the induced topology okay and that is what is meant by the statement that Zaris the Zariski topology is quasi compact okay. So you see for any subset of uh, affine space quasi compactness is just comes for free okay it is nothing it is not it does not have the speciality that compactness the usual compactness has for Euclidean spaces okay and that is the reason uh, in a way that uh, uh, you know it calling the co this kind of compactness the compactness here as quasi compact is kind of justified okay. So when you say quasi it means that this uh, something is left out okay and in this case something serious is left out okay. So uh, how serious is how serious that is is something that you will understand when we define what is meant by completeness or properness which is the correct analog of compactness in algebraic geometry okay. But for the moment uh, th that is the proof of this statement okay okay. So uh, now fine so this is so this is this this kind of ends the uh, discussion about open sets in the Zariski topology. So the discussion so let me summarize the, sum the summary is that any open set in the Zariski topology is a is a, uh, is a finite union of basic open sets okay and these basic open sets are very special in the fact that 
these basic open sets are actually uh, themselves uh, affine varieties okay they are isomorphic to affine varieties okay and uh, uh, you or you also have this property that the open sets in the Zariski, the Zariski topology have the quasi compactness property namely you give me any subset of affine space if there is if it can be covered by a collection of open sets then I can extract from that a finite sub cover okay. So this is about the open sets in the Zariski topology okay now what I am going to do is I am going to shift uh, focus to something else which also was there in this discussion and that is trying to define uh, the so called functions on uh, an open set of an affine variety okay. So uh, uh, so you know uh, so so the next part is defining uh, uh, functions on open sets okay so uh, uh, of course when I say functions I will put it in quotes because uh, uh, what kind of functions what kind of functions uh, we want is something that we have to decide upon and so you know let me recall so what you what we did was uh, if you if you are if you are uh, if you take a fine space and you take uh, 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 x inside a fine space of course small k is an algebraically closed field and uh, this is the affine n space with the Zariski topology and I am taking x a close sub variety there okay that is an irreducible closed subset there. So this is irreducible closed and if you remember we defined uh, we defined the, the ring of functions on x the so called affine coordinate ring to be nothing but the affine coordinate ring of the bigger space namely this uh, which will be the set of polynomials in n variables modulo the ideal of x okay which is the prime ideal. So you know this is uh, this is an integral domain and it is a finitely generated k algebra and then I told you that in this way we actually have a very deep uh, correspondence. Uh, which can be made sense of as a bijective correspondence or even as an equivalence of categories okay uh, which goes on one side from uh, affine varieties to uh, to the other side um, being finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains okay. So uh, but the point is for every irreducible closed subset this is the ring of functions we defined and this is a very legitimate definition because you see what you are doing is the the, uh, the the ring of functions on the affine space is defined to be just the polynomial ring in that many variables because every polynomial uh, in n variables uh, can be thought of as a function on the affine space because you can evaluate it at each point of the affine space it gives you a scalar okay. So these polynomials in n variables are certainly uh, bona fide algebraic functions on the affine space and then uh, uh, when you want the affine uh, when you want the functions on a closed subset an irreducible closed subset then you have to go modulo the ideal of that closed subset and that is because two functions uh, on uh, on the full space on the full affine space two polynomials on the full affine space will define the same function on this subset closed subset x if and only if their difference is 0 on that closed subset and that is the same as saying that the difference lies in this ideal and so you have to identify functions modulo the ideal and that is the reason why you are taking this quotient and therefore you know this definition is absolutely fine this, 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 this definition is intuitively correct and it is also technically correct okay. So this is fine so long as you are trying to define uh, the uh, the algebraic functions uh, on uh, an irreducible closed subset then but the question is what are you going to do if you want to define algebraic functions on an open subset okay and more seriously in the spirit of analysis how are you going to define a function to be algebraic at a point okay see what is it that we do normally in analysis when we want to define continuity you can define continuity at a point okay if you want to define differentiability you can define differentiability at a point similarly if you want to define analyticity or homo holomorphicity you can define it at a point. So all these properties you can always define at a point alright whether a function has that property at, at that point or not okay. So in the same way you can also ask in algebraic geometry give me a function on a sum on some subset okay uh, when will you define it to be a good function an algebraic function at a point okay. So this is a 
this is the in the spirit of analysis how do you do this okay. So the clue is so basically we want to study functions on open sets okay so you know uh, uh, so the question is if if you if so here is a question u inside uh, u inside uh, uh, an uh, open subset okay or you know I will uh, uh, l l l let me say that after the statement so take an open subset of an and my question is what is a of u what is this how do you define functions on u all right and then more generally I can do the following thing take x inside a n to be an affine variety so this is an irreducible closed subset so this is an affine variety in a n it is a closed sub variety of a n and take u an open subset here okay of course all in all these cases uh, I am assuming u is non empty because nobody wants to work with the empty set take a non empty open subset not in affine space but take a non empty open subset of an affine variety and the question is how are you going to define the good functions on u how are you going to do this how to define functions. So, so the key to this is the key to this is the following uh, is uh, this is trying to this is trying to look at to try to define what are the functions on the whole open set but now I can make it point wise and say give me a point of an open set how do you define a function define uh, in a neighborhood of the point to be a good function okay. So given so here is the point wise version here is a point wise version the point wise version is given uh, uh, given p uh, given x small x in uh, u which is an open subset of uh, x which is an irreducible closed sub variety of a n okay how do you when do you say when do you say say that a function uh, uh, v uh, a function uh, let me say let me call this as f from v to k uh, where uh, v is an open containing uh, x is good is a is good or by good I mean algebraic function okay a bona fide function a function that comes in the algebraic sense okay how do you define a function to be algebraic at a point okay. So the the answer to all this is that first of all I cannot keep always saying good good all the time and so we need a notation for that uh, we need a terminology for that and the terminology is regular okay. So the the our we define good functions to be the so called regular functions okay we define the good functions to be regular functions. So uh, so my aim is give me here is a uh, give me an open give me an, uh, give me a point on an open subset uh, in an open subset uh, of a of a closed sub variety and give me a function defined in a neighborhood of that point okay. Uh, when do I say that it is regular at that point okay that is my question and uh, how do you answer this question the answer to this question is already is already there we only have to dig it out it is already there in the discussion that we have uh, had so far. In fact see if you go back uh, we have already proved that any open set is a union of affine open subsets okay basic affine open subsets and therefore you can say that uh, uh, give me a point x uh, and an open neighborhood of the point this open neighborhood can be is a is a union of uh, basic affine opens and therefore one of the basic affine, affine opens will contain this point and therefore you can restrict the function to that basic affine open and then I will have I have to define what is a regular function what is a good function on a basic affine open but that I have already done I have already defined what is meant by a regular function 
a good function on a basic affine open set namely it is just localization it is the it is the is the it is the ambient uh, 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 ring of functions uh, localized at at that uh, at that function okay. So, so, so recall uh, if uh, f is uh, uh, polynomial then uh, a of z of uh, uh, or rather a of d of f is defined to be equal to uh, the polynomial ring localized at g at f okay this is our definition okay this is our definition and what is d of f d of f is, sup is supposed to be it is the complement it is the it is an affine space minus the zero set of f it is open set given by the complement of the hypersurface defined by f of course you know if f is irreducible then you really get a hypersurface but if f is not irreducible then uh, uh, z of f will be a union of hypersurfaces those uh, those that correspond to the irreducible factors of f okay and we have already defined a of d of f to be this of this form okay and just so that I do not mess up notation uh, let me let me do something here let me call this as h okay because I have already used f there let me call this as h and put h everywhere and now you and now you know what I am going to do I am going to say that uh, uh, give me a point give me uh, uh, okay so uh, I need to still make one more statement this is for an affine open set uh, in the it is a basic affine open set in the whole affine space okay but I can also look at the basic of affine open set intersected with a closed subset okay and uh, it is not very difficult to see what the ring of functions on that will be that is uh, that is something that can be written down. So, let me go go to this side and do that. So, uh, it is again given by the appropriate localization. So, you know uh, uh, see if you take so here is my a n and uh, uh, here is my locus d f uh, d h okay and the the as far as the coordinate at the coordinate ring level what happens is that if I if I apply this a uh, 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 this this a function to to this side what I will get is I will get a of a n which is k of the polynomial ring in n variables and uh, here I will get a of uh, a of d of h which is the localization of this k of x1 through xn localized at h this is what I will get and of course you know uh, this uh, this inclusion as an open subset shows up here as a uh, the localization map this is a localization map this is a natural map from a ring to its localization okay and well now if I take a subset x irreducible closed if I take an irreducible closed subset x then uh, I can also look at d h intersection x which is inside this. So, you see uh, this is this is closed this is open and this is open okay this is how the diagram looks this is uh, this is closed inside this because this is the uh, uh, this is the intersection of a closed subset there and this is open inside this therefore this is an open inside this okay by the definition of the induced topology okay. So, the point is uh, sometimes uh, uh, one can also write this as d x h one can write it like this if you want it is and this d h will be d h in a n. So, this is t a n k h that is what this is okay and you know what you are going to get here what I am going to get here is see this irreducible closed subset this corresponds to this quotient going to the affine coordinate ring 
the ring of good functions regular functions on uh, the, the ring of functions on x which is just the uh, polynomial ring divided by the ideal of x okay and you know what this is going to be this is just going to be the localization of this ring at the image of h here which is h bar so this is going to be simply k x1 xn modulo i of x localized at h bar where h bar is simply the image of h here h is here it goes to the element h bar okay and if you actually look at it this way it is a quotient by i and this way also it is a quotient by i uh, this is a quotient by uh, uh, the uh, i x localized at h bar. So this is this is mod i x and this one is mod i x localized at h bar this is localization of an ideal at an element. So these two are quotients that correspond to these two closed subsets okay and these two are localizations this is also localization they correspond to these two open inclusions this diagram commutes this diagram commutes that means this followed by this is this followed by this this followed by this is this followed by this okay. So this is what happens when you apply the a functor to this side so what I want to tell you is that you already know what are the good functions on an affine open subset intersected with a closed subset okay. So you already have definitions uh, for what are good functions on affine space namely the polynomial ring what are the good functions on a irreducible closed subset namely uh, the polynomial ring modulo the ideal of the closed subset which is the prime ideal what are the good functions on a basic open set in affine space it is just localization at that element defi uh, which defines the basic open set and what are the good functions on the uh, base uh, the open set that you get by intersecting a basic open set in affine space with a closed irreducible closed subset which is simply given by the localization of that corresponding I mean it is gi just given by either uh, the correct localization or the quotient in whichever way you want to see it okay. So I I am saying that we already have the value of this a for four kinds of objects we have it for affine space for affine space we know what are the good functions for x we know what are the good functions for an irreducible closed subset we know what are the good functions on an basic open subset of the affine space and then we also know what are the good functions on uh, the intersection of a basic open subset of affine space with an irreducible closed subset. Now from these four we have to cook up the correct definition of a regular function okay and uh, the definition is obvious but the surprise is the following with this new definition if you look at so what you have done is you have defined regular functions at a point and once you define it at a point you can define regular functions on any subset okay the moment you define it for a point you can define regular functions on any subset. So the question is if I start looking at regular functions on the whole affine space what will I get okay will I get back my polynomials or will I get more the answer is you won't get any more that is the beautiful thing beautiful thing is on the affine space the regular functions will still be only polynomials on the irreducible close on an any irreducible close subset the regular functions will still only be these quotients okay you won't get anything more and this tells you that your definition of regular function is correct that the your definition of regular function gives you the right thing when you for these known objects okay so uh, so I'll uh, so I'll make that I'll make that definition now definition uh, uh, let uh, uh, f uh, from let f be a function defined on uh, defined in a in a neighborhood in a, in an in an open neighborhood of a point 
x in an affine variety okay or uh, a quasi affine variety okay a quasi affine variety is just open subset of an affine variety We say f is regular at the point x if there exists polynomials uh, uh, f g with g not equal to 0 uh, in a neighborhood in an open neighborhood of x and such that f is equal to uh, I am sorry I think I should use not f and g I should use g and h which with h not equal to 0 such that f is equal to g mod h in that in that open neighborhood of x okay. So, look at this definition this definition is uh, this, 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 this is what tells you when a function defined in an open uh, neighborhood of a point is a good function it is a regular function at that point and it is very simple all you are saying is that to say that the function see the function is when I say a function defined in neighborhood of a point it is a function with values in k which is the field scalar valued function okay and all I am saying is that you can deem the function to be regular at a point if the function in a neighborhood of the point is a quotient of two polynomials that is all you can you are able to find two polynomials g and h such that the function you get by evaluating this quotient po quotient of polynomials is the same as your original function f in a neighborhood of the point in and that neighborhood of the point obviously should should be in the locus where h does not vanish otherwise I cannot evaluate if h vanishes at a point then I cannot evaluate g by h at a point because I will be dividing by 0 okay. So, it is a very very simple definition uh, I mean it is a it is a it is a lot to write down but the idea is very simple you are saying a set theoretic function is good is regular at a point if it can be written if it is the same function as you get when you evaluate a quotient of polynomials in a neighborhood of that point okay that is all. And uh, what you must understand is that if your point is lying in a basic open set then you know that the uh, already the functions uh, the good functions you have defined on a basic open set are just localizations the functions here and what are the functions here they are of the form g by h in fact they are of the form g by h power n where you know you you also allow a power of you do not in only invert h but you also invert powers of h because inverting h always automatically will also invert powers of h. So, a general element here will look uh, look in the form it will be will be of the form g by h power n but in any case it is one polynomial divided by another polynomial with the bottom polynomial not vanishing that is how the functions look like and you are saying that that is the kind of inspiration to define a general uh, function to be regular at a point. And why is that inspiration correct it is correct because uh, every open set is always broke broken down into a finite union of basic open sets like this. In fact if you take any open subset in an it is a union of finitely many d d h for finitely many h and if you take any open subset of x a closed sub variety that will also be a finite union of such d h is intersected with x all this just follows because of the fact of that you know uh, these are all uh, Noetherian topological spaces and therefore the subsets are all quasi compact. So, any uh, any open cover admits a finite sub cover okay it just follows from that right. 
Now I will have to justify that after with this new definition of what a regular function is I will have to show uh, which is amazing thing the amazing thing is if you take affine space and look at all the regular functions in affine space. So I am looking at all functions on affine space that locally look like quotients of polynomials okay that looks a little bit more complicated than just looking at all the polynomials in n variables but the fact is they are all the same that is the surprise and that is what I am going to prove okay I am just going to show that this definition is correct if you take affine space or if you take a closed subset of a irreducible closed subset of affine space okay that that kind of tells you that this definition is in the right direction okay. So I will stop here and continue in the next lecture.